This is a continuation of my series on the Mercedes-Benz SLS, or self-leveling suspension. It has to do with the rear end right here. In other words, you put a lot of weight in it, it automatically adjusts. That's why it's self-leveling. It's automatic. So the advantage of the system is you can pile a lot of weight in the back of the car, and the rear end's not going to sag down. And that's why the SLS showed up on all these station wagons, you know, beginning back in the late 70s with the 300 TD wagon, that's the W123 series. And then they, of course, had the SLS and the W124, 300 TE and 300D uh, wagons. And then, of course, the introduction of the W210 chassis in 1996. And when they introduced the wagon, of course, it came with SLS, or <laughs> once again, self-leveling suspension. I'm just gonna talk about SLS. I wanna make sure you all understand this. If you're new to this, then you'll get used to the term. If you've seen the SLS on the older wagons, or maybe you've owned an older 300 TD wagon, and you're kind of curious about these W210s, it's basically the same system. There are some differences in relation to where the leveling valve is mounted and how the pump works, but basically it has two struts in the back. They're not shock absorbers. They're hydraulic rams or hydraulic jacks, I should say. They don't have any dampening ability of their own. That's why they're not called shock absorbers. If somebody says, I need to change rear shock absorbers in my Mercedes station wagon. Well, they probably don't understand how the system works. And then there's these nitrogen balls underneath the rear here that they contain a nitrogen gas and the fluid moves back and forth in those balls to allow the dampening of the rear end when you're driving over rough ground or when you hit a, a bump and so on. So there's a valve back here, you know, that helps to keep it level. You have the two hydraulic struts or rams, and then you have those two accumulators, which I may refer to or somebody else may refer to as nitrogen spheres. So I've got this wagon up on the lift. I've been doing a little bit of work to it. We're getting ready to flush the fluid out of the system. We want to replace the fluid in the SLS. And I thought I would just take you on a quick tour of the system. Now, I do this anytime I get a wagon up on the lift. I do a quick walk around underneath the car. And basically, what I'm doing is checking for leaks. You know, if you own one of these wagons and you start having to add fluid to the hydraulic reservoir tank up in the engine compartment, you better stop and check out why you're using fluid. This could be really bad. You develop a really severe leak while you're driving on the freeway. You could do some damage to the system. So anytime you add fluid, you better find out why you had to because it doesn't burn fluid. <laughs> it leaks fluid. And if it disappears, okay, this is really interesting. If suddenly you have a whole bunch of fluid, maybe a cup or two cups of fluid disappear, and you say, hey, I had to add all this fluid, but there's no leaks under the car, then they have gone into the accumulators. Those diaphragms have ruptured in those nitrogen spheres and they've filled up with fluid. And along with that, you're going to start experiencing a really rough ride. You know, I've talked about this in my other videos. Once again, I'll put links below uh, in the show more description of this video to take you to the other videos that I've done on the SLS system. So come along. I'll get underneath the car here and I'll just give you a quick uh, walk under, I should call it, and show you what this system looks like. If you've had a look at any of the other older cars with SLS, right away you'll notice that the accumulator is located right here. Very easy access, very easy to change this on the W210 chassis. I'm looking around here checking fittings for any signs of leaks, and then I'm looking up here at the hydraulic strut, and I'm going to look for any wetness, particularly along the bottom. If you see any wetness coming out right in here, <laughs> you're going to know that that hydraulic strut is leaking fluid. Now you do have a sway bar on this car as well, but the sway bar goes up over the top of the rear end and it has these links. So when you're inspecting your system, make sure these link joints aren't worn out. That will affect the ability of the leveling valve to operate properly. Now let's go take a look at the leveling valve. You start poking around here and it's really hard to find. It's not out in the open in the back of the rear end unlike on some of these other cars. Here's the location of the leveling valve. You can see it's right above this right axle. And it's really hard to get to, but you want to check for any leaks coming out of the fittings or coming out of the valve itself. And the other thing you want to check is this little adjustment arm. Make sure there's no slop in this arm because if you've got play in those ball joints, 
in that adjustment arm, you're going to have problems with it properly leveling. So check that out. You know, I'm not seeing any problem at all on this W210 here in the rear. So I'm going to take you up now in the engine compartment and let's take a closer look at those components as well. When you open the hood on the W210, you may say, well, look, that looks just like the W124 system. You know, there's obviously no separate hydraulic pump here in the front of the engine. So that means it's using the power steering pump to also pump the hydraulic fluid through the SLS. But there's one subtle difference. I want to show you now the W124 and what that looks like. Then I'll come back and show you this one and explain in more detail the two differences. The W124 wagons use a little bit different style pump than a lot of the other cars. The pump for the SLS suspension is integral with the power steering pump. It's in a different chamber and it requires two separate fluids. So you have the fluid for the hydraulic self-leveling suspension in this tank here and then the fluid for the power steering pump goes in the top of the reservoir of the tank here. The W210 is going to have one pump and one fluid source for both the power steering and the SLS. And what that means is it requires a very special fluid. Pay attention to this number. This is why the factory put the part number for the fluid right on this cap. You do not want to use anything that does not match this number and put in this tank or you'll ruin either your power steering pump or your SLS system. Uh, mark my word and hear this warning. Don't think you just go put some cheap hydraulic fluid in this particular system. So when you get the fluid, you look at the part number 001-989-2003. That's the same here, 2003. And this is the fluid you want to use. Granted, it's not that cheap, but think about how often you may need to change this. Let's say maybe every 80 to 100,000 miles, there is no factory recommended change interval. But even then, you're only spending, you know, maybe $60, maybe 70 with a filter. So don't be cheap here, okay? Use the proper fluid, protect your W210 SLS system and power steering system. Now there is a filter in here, just like all the other models, but in the 210, it's a paper element filter. There it is. So we're gonna replace the filter here. We're gonna do a partial flush on the system here uh, we do have a kit on my website which includes a couple liters of that fluid, probably for a better price than you can get at the dealer. But I'll take you through the process of doing either a partial or a, a full flush and changing the filter if you're interested when you purchase the fluid from MercedesSource.com.